Hello everyone, I'm Jason Scott. I'm a business technology platform customer success partner with SAP and I'm based in Perth, Australia. I have over 20 years of experience across development, integration and solution architecture, concentrating on helping businesses solve problems with SAP's technologies. Today I'm going to talk about application development in a cloud native world and how SAP can help you get there with our business technology platform. So why do we need cloud native computing? Cloud native computing has become a driving trend in the software industry. It's a new way to think about building systems that takes full advantage of modern software development practices, technologies, and cloud infrastructure. It enables us to build more resilient and fault tolerant applications and, and deal with rapid change. Unlike the continuous hype that typically drives our industry, cloud native is for real. Considering that the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is a consortium of over 300 major corporations with a charter to make Cloud Native Computing ubiquitous across technology and cloud stacks. A few examples of companies using Cloud Native Computing are shown. This architectural style enables them to rapidly respond to market conditions. They can instantaneously update small areas of live complex applications and individually scale those areas as needed from a few users to millions. In fact, a lot of these companies could not even exist today if it was not for cloud native development practices. Adopting a cloud native focus can help you in your ability to have a more nimble IT architecture capable of pivoting at a moment's notice and with a wide array of services to help developers be far more productive. To make the move to cloud native requires a paradigm shift in developers. You can't just lift and shift, lift and shift applications from on-premise systems into the cloud and express and expect great benefits. You really need to decouple from your on-premise systems via messaging, APIs, data virtualization, and other techniques. Uh, so what, what is cloud native computing? The, the speed and agility of cloud native comes about from a number of factors. Foremost is cloud infrastructure, is the cloud infrastructure that exists today with five in additional pillars shown here. Modern design. How would you design a cloud native app? A widely accepted methodology for constructing cloud-based applications is called the 12-factor app. It describes a set of principles and practices that developers would find to construct applications optimized for modern cloud environments. Principles such as, to name just a few, API first, make everything a service, assume, assume your code will be consumed by a front-end client or even another service. Build, release, and run, enabled with the modern CI CD system, which is continuous integration and delivery, part of what we call DevOps. Authentication and authorization, implement identity from the start, consider the role-based access control features available in public clouds. Uh, we also have microservices. Cloud native systems embrace microservices, built as a set of small independent services that interact through a shared fabric. Each implements a specific business capability within a larger domain context. They promote modularity and reuse and enable independence so that different developers or even teams can work on each microservice. If one service happens to go down, it does not pull down all the others necessarily. And they compose together to form a fully featured application. We have containers. Containers provide a way to package a microservice and all its dependencies into a binary quarter container image. Containers provide portability and guarantee consistency across environments. Managing containers is done with software called a container orchestrator. Kubernetes has become an industry standard for this purpose, along with the likes of Cloud Foundry and others. We also have backing services. So our cloud native systems depend on many ancillary services, such as data stores, message brokers, monitoring and identity services. These are all known as backing service services. Backing services save developers a lot of time. Instead of building or owning the capability yourself, you simply consume it. And lastly, automation. This is where the concept of DevOps comes in. The goal here is really to catch any problems in the development cycle early where they are less expensive to fix. And the continuous integration tooling that I mentioned above uh, enables this. So building your apps and extensions cloud native is something that SAP sees as very important for our future and for your future. 
It enables the concept of side-by-side -side extensions to your business processes. Side-by-side -side extensions enable you to extend and customize your business processes without changing the enterprise systems themselves. We've had years of continual customization to enterprise systems, and we know what the impacts of that are. A slow pace of change with what developers feel are overly complex change processes. Yeah, but really, they're probably not. They're there to protect the enterprise systems. So the question is, how do we handle this slow pace of change? Also, it can be difficult to upgrade and patch our enterprise systems, often requiring large projects and regression testing, consuming a lot of business resources. We need a way to avoid all that. We need to keep the core clean, which is something you will often hear, allowing rapid upgrades to enterprise systems as and when required. Using a cloud native strategy, you can continue to safely customize and extend the business processes at pace in the cloud. SAP's business technology platform provides outcomes across three main customer scenarios enabling cloud native development. Integration, not only is integration essential across all your enterprise systems, but it's also essential for decoupling your side-by-side -side extensions via messaging and events to enable cloud native development. Data to value. It's essential that organizations have a consolidated view across all their data assets and are able to achieve insight and make real-time decisions. This can assist with cloud native architectures by federating or virtualizing data into the cloud. The data doesn't actually move or doesn't need to move. And extensibility. Companies need to stay agile and adapt rapidly to new business conditions and changing customer demands. Extensibility allows companies to build and enhance all their application investments to meet the customer's dynamic needs and provide continual value. These scenarios or areas of BTP are what enables you as an SAP customer to become cloud native. BTP's objective is to offer you a set of great business application development experiences to move you from legacy to cloud native development practices giving you a full cloud toolbox to help you accelerate twice as fast. We are using open source container orchestration, service mesh, runtimes, and so on, so that your applications always stay relevant with innovations and security patches all released by open source communities. Services on BTP are focused on pre-configuration and business content to work best with your existing SAP investments. SAP Event Mesh, for example, Unlike other event brokers, SAP Event Mesh complements our, our extension suite as it understands business events emitted by our ERP systems, such as S4HANA, S4 Cloud, Commerce Cloud, Success Factors, and so on. You just need to plug in your event listener and focus on the business logic. BTP enables that universal data layer, a common layer for consumption so that you can leave your data at rest, combining your data with SAP and Azure and AWS, et cetera, without actually moving the data. Lastly, BTP stands out in its, ability, in its ability to offer the option to consume partner services. This is very unique. These could be Azure Data Explorer, AWS 3, Google BigQuery, or messaging solutions like Azure Event Grid. If you already work with these products, you do not need to migrate your data. Instead, we enable integration and federation to secure your existing investments and accelerate your future requirements with BTP. Now we're going to look a, a little more deeply into how to develop a cloud native app on BTP using CAP or the Cloud Application Programming Model. That's what we call our golden path for cloud native development. We call it our golden path because we focus on using BTP to leverage the best of the cloud with as many out of the box capabilities as possible or taking away complexities, as many complexities as possible to make life easier for developers. It is an opinionated framework that takes away a lot of the frustrations, decision-making and boilerplate coding that is typically required when you start a new project. It allows you to very easily create services in the cloud. These services are APIs, full APIs and persistency with a HANA Cloud database. Other databases are available as too as CAP has a plugin framework. CAP has made the decision to work with either JavaScript or Java as the two most popular languages in the SAP ecosystem, outside of ABAP, of course, in your on-premise, your, your ECC and S4 systems. And using JavaScript, 
for one, certainly makes it easier for your Fiori developers or your, your front end developers to move into this area. CAP uses CDS for data modeling, CDS being core data services. Your developers will be very familiar with this from development in your ECC or SPOS systems. It's a very powerful and simple way to create data models but they're having, without having to go into the database and use more complex SQL. CAP can also work with any user interface framework, whether it be the likes of React, Vue.js, to name just two. <clears throat> but of course, it works very well with Fiori or SAP UI 5 as the, underlying as the underlying library is called. All these things are cloud native and can be deployed on BTP, on the Cloud Foundry or Kima runtimes as microservices. CAP comes built in with lots, all about improving developer productivity. Built-in capabilities require no code for such things as CRUD style APIs, create, read, update, delete. So full processing APIs, draft document handling. How often have you been on a website, entered a heap of data, got distracted and come out and it's timed out and you've lost your data. Draft document handling is built in. Validation, validate input or user input. Search and pagination, handling of streaming media, images, videos, and so forth. Multi-tenancy applications, data privacy, authentication and authorization, localization, and much more, all built into CAP with other tools. You know, you'd have to use third-party libraries and so on to get a lot of this capability or build it yourself. Next, I'll show an example of how we can use CAP and our low-code tools to quickly get started. <clears throat> But before we move on, I'll just quickly mention that CAP is not the only way. If your team has deep ABAP experience and want to reuse, that they want to reuse, we also have an ABAP environment on BTP with a similar framework to CAP, and it's called RAP, of course, the RESTful ABAP programming model. And that also enables you to build cloud native applications in a similar fashion. And of course, you can also use any language and framework you like or have skills in. Um, and have the capability to deploy that to BTP. But today though, we'll continue with CAP. As I said, it's our golden path where we try to make it the easiest way for developers um, to get going with cloud native applications. I'll now switch over to a, a, a short demo where we'll take you through uh, how you would build a, a, a simple CAP application. So here we have our application development environment. This is what we call the low code lobby. Um, it, it, it lists some projects that I've previously created uh, and we can quickly create a new project, either an AppGyver project, which would be a, a native mobile app type of uh, application or a business application. And that's what's gonna use the CAP framework that we've been talking about. So I have quickly created a sample application here called Heroes. Heroes is an app that allows us to rent out superheroes to customers. Uh, so they can use them for kids' birthdays uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, if I click on my application, it'll take me to our business application studio. And this is what it looks like. You can see we have a number of areas here that are typical for any development project, such as data models, services, user interfaces, uh, and so forth. I've already pre-created a couple of things just to speed it up. I've created a couple of entities. So let's just click in and have a look. You can see I've created the heroes entity to manage our superheroes. And we've got some orders and customers so we can manage um, our, our customers. You can see this is a WYSIWYG or you know, drag and drop nice interface. I can add new properties. I can drag lines to create relationships between my entities. So uh, very handy. We jump back to the homepage now. We also have services and services are actually our APIs. What APIs do we wanna expose for our user interfaces to work? So here you can see I've just created three replicating our data model, but you don't have to do it that way. So if I go into our services, very similar looking screen. Um, so services allow us to expose our data model as APIs. By default, they're fully compliant OData version four APIs. With a few little tweaks, you can expose them as plain REST or GraphQL uh, and, and other protocols are coming. Uh, this service as editor, it really allows you to project your data model to your users in the APIs. So you might select just a subset of the properties from your data model or all of them, 
or you can even um, use authorization so that an administrator would see some properties or some view and normal users would see other properties and, and so on and so forth. If we go back to home, another typical uh, thing that we need with development projects, of course, is sample data. We want to test with some um, sample data to see how our app is going while we're building. So you can see we have a simple editor here where we can add new rep, add new records. We can also upload from a CSV file. We also have user interfaces. I've already created a quick one, but let me just show you if you click the plus, it just takes you through a simple wizard to construct a basic interface. You give, your, give the UI some name details. You can choose a type, a template-based responsive app means it will develop a, or create a Fiori app. A mobile centric will use what we call the MDK or the mobile development kit, you know, allowing you to target mobile apps a bit better. Next, it'll allow you to choose from a, a couple of different types of layouts for Fiori app. We'll use the list report, which is a classic table with filter criteria, and you can click an item to drill into further details and so on. The next step, you can select the properties from your data source that you're interested in. But as I mentioned, just to speed things up, I've already created one here. We've called it Heroes Management. And that's just loading what we call the page map. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. So the page map shows us the pages or the screens in our application. Um, you can see it generated two pages here. The list report, which is like our main list of data. In our case, it'll be our list of superheroes. And when you click on one of those items, it'll navigate into the object page, which will show more details, um, like the list of orders for that superhero. Uh, the beauty of here is you can make some quite complex changes on each of your pages, all without doing any code. So here for the, for the list report screen, you can see here I've got a filter bar area and a table area of column. And I can hit the plus sign and add additional columns. We go back to our object page and click change. Wait for that to load. You can see it's made up of like header and footer sections uh, and then the main body sections. You can see we have a form called general information and we have a table of orders. Tables made up of columns. If I wanted to, I could add an additional column as easy as selecting it from the list. And this is coming from the service, which in turn is coming from the data model that we created. You can also make other changes like uh, auto refresh and so forth on your tables uh, from, the, from the page map. You can also add completely new pages or delete pages, should you wish. Let me just close the page map and go back to the home screen. We also have these two other options here or two other areas. One is workflows. I, I won't show these two today, but workflows allows you to add in you know, basic approval steps, for example, your application might need some sort of management approval and that you can create the workflow for that embedded into your application. Again, all with uh, no code. External data models is where you wanna use APIs that are out there on the World Wide Web. But the most common use case for that is gonna be using OData APIs from SuccessFactors or Ariba or APIs exposed from your S4 or ECC on-premise systems, uh, for example. So when you're building, you know, you've created your data models, your services, it's some sample data to test with and, and an application. It's a great start, but we want to have a look at it. So we can click the preview button up here in the top right. We'll run it with that sample data that I created. And we'll just give it a moment while it builds the application and builds the cap data model. And it presents this web page view here. We can see a mock-up of what it would look like in a Fiori launch pad. And we can click our tile to see the running app or to see the app running. And there it is, a basic list of a couple of superheroes for which I can drill down into and see some further information and some outstanding orders. You'll note that there's the edit button because just out of the box, it already has full CRUD, create, read, update and delete capabilities with draft document support. So if I start editing here, I can actually get distracted, walk away, pick up and finish editing on my mobile device, for example. We'll just close that for now. You'll also notice the list of services that we made. We can actually look at the raw data behind those services. So obviously that just matches what's in my uh, sample data that I created. 
for when debugging and so forth, it can be very handy uh, to see the, the raw data. I'll just close those tabs now. Back to the home screen. Now, the best part, or I've left the best part to last, and that is when you offer a one-click deployment process, you can see the deploy button in that top right-hand screen, uh, top right-hand of the screen. Often the biggest impediment to developers to make the leap to cloud native development is the myriad configuration files and complexities with deploy. With BPP, you can deploy your application with just one click, uh, which for me, I think is pretty amazing. <clears throat> Therefore, your let's call them pro code developers. We're not leaving them out, of course. So you can start your application build in this low code fashion. But if we go under the View Explorer menu, we can see the underlying file system. And this is just a standard CAP project file layout. If any of your developers have touched CAP before, they'll be familiar with this, how we have the app section, which is what includes your web applications. We have the database section, which includes your entities. And if I just open one up, you can see the hero customer and order that you saw from our low code data explorer before. And we also have our APIs, which are defined under the serve the SRD folder. So the awesome thing here is that, you know, you can go pro code and continue editing the source. And then you can switch back to the low code and still work with it and go back and forth as much as you like. So as a developer myself, this is great because it means I can scaffold out a working and deployable app and don't have to worry about any of the configuration issues. Then I can switch the, the code, um, then I can switch to the code view and finish my app by just thinking about the business logic. I don't have to worry about any of the technicalities behind deploying it and getting it into BTP. So once I've clicked that deploy button, it'll appear up here in, uh, this is the BTP cockpit, the business technology platform cockpit. I'm looking at the list of HTML5 applications I've deployed, and there's one that Heroes Management. Um, if I open that up, we can see our application. I can create and edit um, standard Fury list report features. <clears throat> so with this type of app development, we can quite easily do some pretty amazing things very easily. We can extend success factors in Aruba with new, function, <coughs> new functionality. We can capture events when business objects change in S4 or ECC, for example. Uh, we could use CAP, a CAP project to listen to employee changes, the employee change event. And we could then, when that is received, mash that up with other data from the ECC or other third party systems. And then we can act on it and perform business logic on that data with AI business services or any of the other BTP capabilities. Uh, now I'll just switch back to the slides. Okay, so I've talked about cloud native, what it is and why I think you should be interested in it. I've talked about how SAP provides a way to move into cloud native development for your applications and extensions with our business technology platform. And finally, we've seen some specific services and the CAP framework used to quite easily create a cloud native application, which used HANA Cloud for a managed database in the cloud, providing an out of the box API with OData v4, the service layer. Out of the Fury Elements app from a template, which can be easily annotated to add further functionality like CRUD and draft support. This is really the hardest part of making the leap to cloud native the paradigm shift of decoupling from your core business systems data and the initial step set up and config of a new app, fully deployed to the Cloud Foundry runtime in the business technology platform, from which you can now iterate on and concentrate on just the business logic and the UX. Thank you for your time.